Let's switch over to a primitive here. So I'm going to grab a cylinder 3D and let's go ahead and zoom out here. Let's go to our options. We're going to go to initialize our V divides. We're going to drop all the way down to the lowest number I can. And our H divides, we're going to drop this down to like 12. And then I'm going to hit make poly mesh 3D. So just a few more examples here. We're going to go back to our poly group men menu. We're going to go to group by normals. So we get a nice poly group for all these different caps here. Now I'm going to hover over this face, hit spacebar with our Z modeler brush, BZM. We're going to go to inset poly group all region. We're going to inset these, we're going to inset them again. Then I'm going to do Q mesh poly group all. I'm going to Q mesh these up, but I'm going to hold down shift just so I can push those along the surface normal. We can go back to inset region. We'll do it twice. We'll do Q mesh poly group all again. We'll hold down shift and pull these in. And then we'll do Q mesh poly group all. We'll hold down control. We'll pop out a copy like so. Let's go to the side here. We'll do insert multiple edge loops. We'll just pull this up. And then on each one of these, we'll do Q mesh poly group all, and we'll pull these in. Go ahead and hit X to turn X symmetry on. And let's do Q mesh a single poly, and we'll Q mesh some polys out this way and this way. Or we can Q mesh a poly out this way and then just tap to get the exact same distance. And if you want, we can do that all the way down. And just for fun, let's hover over a face. We'll go ahead and do delete a single poly. We'll delete all these ones. And we'll hover over an edge. And if you're ever having a hard time selecting, like going from one edge to the other because it disappeared, go all the way down to the bottom of your tool menu, go to display properties, turn on double temporarily. That'll be a lot easier to select those back edges. So we can go to bridge, two holes. We have interactive resolution turned on, so we can kind of dial that in. And then we can just do tap, tap. And if you're using Z Modeler and it's a little bit easier sometimes to use your mouse. One of the few rare instances where I'd say using a mouse and ZBrush is beneficial is when you're using Z Modeler, it gives you a little bit more accuracy. So we've kind of made a weirdo shape like so. And the reason I'm doing this is so we can talk about uh, dynamic subdivision. So if we go back here to our geometry, you're going to see we have dynamic subdiv. Uh, if we want to, we can put real dynamic subdivision onto here. We can just divide this up and that's what it's going to look like. However, if I ever decide, you know what? I want to keep Z modeling. So I'm going to go through here with my Z modeler brush. I'm going to like polygroup this and it's going to tell me you have multiple subdivision levels. Z modeler is not going to work real nice. You can do free subdivision levels. But we'll get to that later, but not ideal. So what I prefer to do is instead of doing multiple subdivisions, I'll hit D to activate dynamic and then shift D to turn it off. So what I can see is I can preview what it's going to look like when I subdivide, but if I ever want to make a change, all I got to do is hit shift D, or I can just actually make changes in here. I can, for instance, go to insert single edge loop and I can insert edge loops all I want, uh, but I can do shift D if I want to, and I can put in edge loops and change this up, or if I want to, I can even do Q mesh single poly and I can go ahead and make it so these top ones don't connect anymore. Then I can hit D again and see how that updates. Now, when I'm doing dynamic subdivisions here, you're going to see it's basically uh, doing the exact same thing as if I divided this with the smooth modifier turned on, which means it's averaging the vertices, like what we talked about before, where as it's subdividing, it's averaging the vertices between the faces, the new faces it's making. So it's giving it a nice soft look, but it's also kind of melting my object here. One thing I can do is I can use creasing in order to combat that. So if I go here to crease, you're going to see I have a crease tolerance set to 45. So just like and this is more of a visual representation of that. If I go to polygroups here and we do group by normals, and then I go up to my crease menu and I go crease PG, which is crease my polygroups. Now when I hit dynamic, you're going to see it's going to get smooth, but it's also going to keep my edges nice and crispy. So if I want to, my dynamic is set to smooth subdivision of two. Let's see what it looks like if I subdivide it three times or four times. Pretty cool. It's very, very smooth. And if I ever want to get rid of that, I can just turn dynamic off and then it'll toggle that on and off, or I can change that back down to a subdivision level of two or three or whatever. We'll go ahead and keep that at five. Now, this isn't super realistic looking because usually when surfaces are sharp, they're not razor computer graphics sharp. There's a little bit of a bevel to the edge to catch the light. There's a couple different ways we can achieve this, but one easy way is to balance the smooth subdiv with this crease level. 
So essentially, if I drop this crease down to like crease level down to two and keep my smooth subdiv at five, um, it's not going to update in here sometimes. If you do Shift D and then D again, it will update. And now you're going to see we're getting a nice bevel along those edges. Essentially, what it's doing, if I turn off dynamic and I turn on polyframe here, you're going to see when I hit piece crease PG, it gave me a little dotted, kind of hard to see, gave me a little dotted line around my polygroups here. That's creasing. And you can manually go through here and crease. So if I uh, turn on dynamic, and you're going to see, okay, that looks nice. Um, you can also hover over an edge. You can do crease, edge loop complete, and you can crease an entire edge loop. And if you turn on polyframe again, you're going to see it put a crease line down that entire edge loop here. Or you can crease individual edges and go crease edge, and you can like crease this edge here. And that'll go ahead and crease it for you. However, if I turn off dynamic and I go and I hit divide, you're going to see it's keeping my creases very, very sharp. So if I hit divide again, it's really sharp, hit divide again it's all of a sudden, it's not sharp anymore. That's because my crease level was set to two. So let's do that again. Crease level set to two, I can divide once, twice, and on the third time, it uncreases everything. That's what that crease level does. If I set that to crease level of four, I can divide, 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 and then when I divide again, it uncreases everything. So the bad thing is, if I do real subdivisions, it's a lot of geometry. You can see I got all the way up, you know, I'm in 30,000 points right here. Instead of doing that, what I like to do is turn on dynamic. So now I'm staying at 468 points, very lightweight file. It looks like it's a lot of polygons, but it's really not because it's just a preview. But I can still dial in the crease level. So as long as my smooth subdiv level is higher than my crease level, I'm still going to get a bevel on my edges. Now, as soon as these are the same, crease level of 5, smooth subdiv of 5, it's going to go back to razor sharp. But if I drop that crease level down to like three, it'll subdivide up one, two, three times, and then smooth subdivide two more times, and I'll get a nice fall off. Now, if I change that to like crease level of one, that could work. It gets pretty soft here, though, and it especially looks pretty nasty on top of that cylinder. And the reason is we need control loops in order to control that shape, because you can see that polarized edge there, that polarized cap, is kind of causing this to wrinkle a little bit. So what you can do is hover over an edge, you can do insert single edge loop, you can insert an edge loop along that top there, and that'll get rid of that kind of wrinkly top cap there. And you can also, if you wanted to, let's do shift D to turn off some dynamic. Q, uh, we can do inset polygroup all region, and then you can just inset to put an edge loop, or again, you can insert a single edge loop, doesn't really matter. And then even on this side, you can insert a single edge loop, and then when you hit D, you'll get a nice smooth, as opposed to, let's go ahead and isolate this, hold down control shift, switch back to select rectangle. And uh, part of the problem is dynamic's not gonna work if any part of your mesh is hidden. So it's deactivated, it's, I mean, it's still on, but it's, it's not working. So what I'm gonna do, I'm skipping ahead a little bit, I'm gonna go to split, hidden, and now this is its own subtool. This is its own subtool. So now I can go into solo mode here, and your solo button's probably way down here. If you're on a monitor where you can't see it, go to the transform menu and the solo button's right in there. So now you can see the difference, we get a nice, result up top and then down down below it's still lumpy. Now if I do shift D, what you can do is you can hover over this edge, insert single edge loop, hold down alt and delete these, hit D, and now you can manually go through and add an edge and see how it changes the fall off of your edge as well as how nice it makes the surface. But because it's dynamic you can always go back into these settings and say you know what, crease level of two, smooth subdiv of five, and that gives me the result I want. And you can still go back through and update this on the fly. So you can do Q mesh a single poly, and we can detach this one now. Now again, this is going to kind of do some wacky things to your crease groups here, because we creased poly group. So what I, instead of creasing poly groups, what I tend to want to do is I'm going to do, um, under my crease menu here, I'm going to do uncrease all, and then I use my crease tolerance to dictate where my creases go. And that's the same thing as the poly group with a tolerance level, it'll polygroup based on normal angle, or angle between your edges there, or your faces. The same thing as a creasing, it looks at your angles and either creases or uncreases them. If you want to soften any of these out, you can hover over an edge, you can do crease, edge, hold down alt, and that'll uncrease an edge. You can round these edges off if you want to. Get a little bit of a different look. A lot of different non-destructive, really lightweight ways to make nice subdivided geometry without paying the cost of real subdivisions, as well as having more flexibility to go through and continue updating your model without having to deal with a ton of polygons or subdivision history.